everyone, I'm Gillian Bickley, Provis Hong Kong co-publisher and co-founder of the International Provis Prizes. I was born in the UK, attended the Worcester City Grammar School for Girls and Bristol and Leeds Universities. I've lived and worked in Lagos, Nigeria and Auckland, New Zealand, but since 1970 mainly in Hong Kong. I've travelled to the USA, Jamaica and Scotland for academic research. I've kept in touch with the UK through annual visits, usually. Greetings to you, our loyal friends and supporters, to established and new Provis authors, and each of you among our new audience worldwide. This online edition of the Provis Spring Reception 2020 comes to you thanks to the COVID-19 pandemic. We wish you all health, safety and comfort during this very difficult period. We acknowledge the support of Hong Kong Arts Development Council for publication support and also for supporting the launch tonight of Professor Everywhere by Nicholas Binge and the Year of the Apparitions by Jose Manuel Sevilla. We acknowledge Hong Kong Arts Development Council also for support for the administration of the Provis Prize for book-length unpublished fiction, non-fiction or poetry, 2019. We have an exciting hour or so ahead of prize announcements, book launches, author talks and poetry readings. If you've already obtained copies of the four books being launched, you may like to have them to hand, particularly the poetry anthology, Mingled Voices 4, and Martin McCosker's Herotic Book, so that you can have them in front of you as you listen to the readings. If you haven't done so yet, you may like to purchase copies later, and perhaps listen to the Provis Spring Reception 2020 online again with them to hand. Good evening and welcome to the Proverse Spring Reception for 2020. Uh, thank you for joining. My name is Peter Sudorko and I'm the University Librarian at the University of Hong Kong. Uh, I want to first start by congratulating Gillian and Werner for pursuing uh, a Spring Reception for Proverse this year, 2020. Uh, it is an exceptionally odd year, to put it mildly, we are all uh, working through very difficult times and uh, again I just uh, extend my congratulations to Gillian and Werner for their bravery in pursuing this event. Uh, through the past weeks I have been attending many meetings uh, locally and internationally uh, through Zoom and other medium uh, and while face-to-face -face is always superior, uh, nonetheless we still manage to get achievements concluded uh, through these online meetings. So I hope that you find useful information throughout this reception. Um, in, in terms of where we are at the moment with the uh, pandemic, etc., uh, it, it really highlights the importance of books and reading and the great work that Proverse does in bringing uh, quality publications, quality writing, to the fore and at Hong Kong U Library we run a regular book talk which we have been doing since 2002 and Provost has been a great supporter of our book talks. Uh, Gillian and Werner as well as other authors and poets have contributed to our regular book talks. If you are interested in, in viewing some of these book talks we have actually recorded all of them just google three words HKUL book talks and you will be directed to our HKUL Reading Club where you can revisit uh, all of the book talks that we have held since the year 2002. So with that, I wish the Proverse Spring Reception the greatest of success in this extraordinary time for 2020, and I hope that you will all stay safe and remain healthy. Thank you very much. Greetings, everyone. I'm Werner Bickley, Proverse Hong Kong co-publisher and co-founder of the International Proverse Prizes. I was born in the UK, attended Altrincham Grammar School and studied at the universities 
of Cardiff and London. Ever since I was 19, including time as a sub-lieutenant in the Royal Navy, I have lived and worked mainly in Asia for the colonial service in Singapore and for the British Council in Burma, Indonesia and Japan and latterly for the government of Hong Kong in, uh, as founding director of the Institute of Language in Education. I also spent a number of years in Honolulu where I was director of the Cultural Learning Institute of the East-West Centre and in Saudi Arabia where I worked as head of the English Language Training Unit for Saudi. I have kept in touch with the UK through usually annual visits. You can see that Gillian and I have an international perspective in our personal and professional lives, as well as in publishing. Winners of the Provost Prize for unpublished book-length fiction, non-fiction or poetry receive careful preparation for publication, international publication and distribution, as well as a cash prize awarded at the time a winning book is published. There may also be a number of supplementary prizes as decided each year on the basis of the quality of the submissions. Entries in 2019 were again of a high standard and were received from around the world. There are four finalists, John Assum, Australia, J.P. Lindstroth, USA, Jack Meyer, USA, and Jan Pearson, Australia. From among these four, the winner, or at most two winners, will be announced at the Provost Autumn Reception on the 19th of November 2020. One or more supplementary prizes will also be announced at the same time, not necessarily chosen only from among these finalists, one supplementary prize has already been decided and is being launched tonight. Two of the finalists, each from the USA, have sent us greetings. J.P. Lindstroth is an adjunct professor and editorial writer based at Palm Beach, Florida, and Jack Meyer is a pediatrician based in Vermont. Well, this is J.P. Lindstroth in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, in the United States. I'm delighted my book of poetry, Epical Reckonings, has been selected as a finalist for the 2019 prize. Please know how grateful, honored, and humbled I am to be a finalist. I'm especially grateful to Dr. Gillian Bickley and Dr. Werner Bickley, founders and editors of Proverse Publishing in Hong Kong, and also to the Proverse editorial team. My book, Epical Reckonings, was written to emphasize major events and calamities at the beginning of the 21st century. The book is an attempt to capture the zeitgeist of this century marked mostly by incredible human tragedies. One of the major themes in the book is racism, that is racism against migrants and refugees, against African-Americans, racism against Iraqi prisoners of war, racism against Yemeni children and Katrina victims and Brazilian Amerindians. My poetry book, Epical Reckonings, as a whole is meant to give voice to the voiceless. Above all, and ironically, it was written before this unfolding global tragedy and global pandemic of coronavirus COVID-19. So in summary, I am grateful, honored, and humbled to have been selected as a finalist for the Proverse Prize 2019. Please, everybody, keep safe. Thank you very much. Hello, folks. I'm Jack Mayer. I live in the United States in the snowy and cold New England state of Vermont. I'm honored 
and delighted that my poetry collection, Poems from the Wilderness, has been chosen as a finalist for the Proverse Prize 2019. These poems are inspired by the mystery and beauty I have experienced walking alone in wilderness where they were composed. Though deeply personal, I hope they will resonate with those pieces of wilderness we all carry in one way or another. Solitude and the natural world are the fertile medium in which my thoughts and words marinate a stew flavored by revelations about physics, music, and spirit, as well as the forests and trails I walk. Thank you, and be well. Thank you, Dr. Jack Mayer and Dr. J.P. Lindstrom, and congratulations on your places as two of the four finalists for the Provost Prize 2019. Nicholas Binge, was born in Singapore of British parents, went to the University of Warwick in the UK, and now lives and teaches in Hong Kong. He has been awarded a supplementary prize in the Provost Prize competition 2019, and his sci-fi novel, Professor Everywhere, is being launched this evening. We're very grateful to Hong Kong Arts Development Council for publishing support for his book, and the, and the launch tonight. Everyone, I'm Nicholas Binge, and my novel Professor Everywhere is being launched today by Proverse. I'm a British born author who lives here in Hong Kong. And I've been asked to say a few words to introduce the book and introduce myself uh, to you all. I'm going to start by quoting Shakespeare, because what's the point of being an author if you can't be a bit pretentious, right? <laughs> In Hamlet's rather overwrought instruction to the players to put, about to put on the fictional murder of Gonzago, he says, The purpose of playing, both at the first and now, was and is to hold as twere the mirror up to nature, to show virtue her own feature, scorn her own image. And I've always thought that the image of a mirror here is so beautifully apt, to see fiction and reality not as two entities, but as a reflection of one another is something that's always stuck with me. And the more I read, the more I think the lines are not just blurred, but completely non-existent. And no, I'm not talking about the Trumpian epidemic of fake news. Rather, I'm fascinated by the fictional narratives that we tell ourselves in order to find constancy and sanity in our real lives. And also by the honest and undeniable truths that can be found in completely made up stories. I'd go as far to say that for me, some of the most fictional parts of our day-to-day -day lives are found in what we take to be persistent and universal truths, things like gender, morality, culture, love. And by that same token, the most genuine truths are often found in some of the most speculative and fantastical of fiction. I suppose that's why everything that I write, this novel included, has a heavy dash of the speculative. Science fiction, fantasy, horror. I think if you want to find real truths, it's best to go looking in the most fictional of places. Professor Everywhere is a sci-fi mystery novel, primarily. It's designed to be a fun read. I had a lot of fun writing it. A bit of a page turner. Secret laboratories, shifting loyalties, alternate universes, government conspiracies. You know, people having sex and people getting shot. The good stuff. But for me as an author, it was also about achieving a certain degree of verisimilitude. I wanted to challenge myself to write something that felt like you weren't really reading fiction at all, but a non-fiction work, a memoir of historical events that some part of you feels actually maybe all happened, but you just forgot about it. Maybe you missed that lesson in school that day. Maybe you were in the wrong universe at the wrong time. And underneath that, Professor Everywhere is also about the stories that we tell ourselves, whether or not they're worth believing. Those of you that have read the book know that my answer is a frustratingly non-committal, sometimes. <laughs> Anton Chekhov always did say the business of the author is not to provide solutions, but to pose questions the right way. I'm really grateful to Gillian and everyone at Proverse for picking up this book and supporting it. There's a, a bunch of other people who deserve thanks. My wife, certainly, other writers and friends. And even if you're not persuaded to buy a copy immediately, I'd 
urge you, if you come across one, to flick to the back and look at the acknowledgements. These people deserve to be recognized. Most of all, I'm thrilled to see it in print. May it be the first of many. And if you feel like a genre-bending, footnoted, sci-fi thriller sounds like it's worth a look, then please, I'd encourage you to pick up a copy. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. And congratulations on the launch of Professor Everywhere. Let's hope it will be read everywhere. The books Provost publishes come to us by two routes. Firstly, as you've heard, as entries to the annual International Provost Prize. And secondly, after an author's initial inquiry, as direct proposals through the Publish with Provost form on the Provost website. We're delighted tonight to launch two poetry collections which came to us by the second route. First, The Year of the Apparitions by Catalan author Jose Manuel Sevilla, translated by himself into English. We are very grateful for publication support for this book also from Hong Kong Arts Development Council. The second po poetry collection, Herotic Book, by Marta Mikoska is a new edition of the original English translation published a year ago in Macedonia in a bilingual Macedonian English edition. Marta's presentation consists of a reading set to music of two poems, Purple Me and Remembrance Room, pages 43 and 41 respectively from the paperback edition of her book. Hello everybody. I am Jose Manuel Sevilla and I have been invited to introduce and present my book, The Year of the Apparitions. The Year of the Apparitions is a product of the year 2019. The miseries of the world closer to me are permanently present in the verses of my poems, verses that are dreams under the daylight. Hong Kong, Catalonia are those worlds and those dreams, bad dreams. Curiously, both share similar failures in a dramatic, sometimes farcical year. Both suffered disdain, abuse, violence, and worst of all, shared frustration. I wrote my poems after transforming myself into a living memory that comes back and looks around, a ghost that brings with him images of movies, photographs, musics, and voices in a suitcase. I landed in an airport I didn't know, took a taxi with colors and manners strange to me, and I stayed in a hotel with unfamiliar smells and sounds. And then I went out and started to walk. The year of the apparitions is how the shocking reality mixes in the head of a ghost from the past. Probably this is the essence of our daily lives in some way. How we navigate through it is perhaps thanks to routine, divine routine. What are religions but routines? Routine narratives, routine answers, routine exercises? We are safe and saved. Another thing is to sit down and write about it. This is the moment when the routine disappears and you are naked, a naked ghost. And then the disdain of the powerful, the abuse of the leaders, the violence of the police, and worst of all, the frustration. In Catalonia and Hong Kong, the law has been used to the level of caricature to erase rights. The future has been stolen from the younger generations and they decided to burn the present. Fine with me. I would have done exactly the same. Then the police. Some say they follow orders. An argument that, surprisingly, is still used everywhere, every time, as if it had not been defeated forever 
in Nuremberg in 1946. And of course, the bottom line, the money. That was the bottom line of the dictatorships of the 20th century, and it continues to be so in the mongrel regimes of the 21st. This is what the ghost saw in 2010, what I saw. And I wrote about the clash with the daydreams in my suitcase in a book. If I had written it in 2020, I would have probably written about the plague. Some say that COVID-19 is a nature's response to our abuses. I don't think so. Plagues have existed since the dawn of times, and now we have come to realize that we are not that special. On the contrary, nature reminds us of our abuses every single day. It sends us mirrors. Nature made beings like Donald Trump or Boris Johnson as mirrors. If, if I had written my book in 2020, it would probably have been called The Year of the Mirrors. Maybe I will take a plane and arrive at an airport, I don't know, and take a taxi strange to me again. I will let you know. I want warmly to thank Proverse, the Hong Kong Arts Development Council, and you for listening during the play. Purple me in perpetuity, pure like very fairy skin, with all veins and drains, wanting to show through the pulse, purify me like a purple lotus, pamper me like a poodle, with curls Curdle me like a clay pot in your hands. Pineapple my juices, horn my pipes, blow your winds into my tubes. Peach my cherry pie with your syrup. Be my pentagon. Make me negotiate your intentions. Convince me that purple is a new orange. Remembrance Room Joys and my hands are shaking while as I touch your neck I renounce you. Don't hold your breath that titillates my cleavage at least until we triumph and throw the confetti. You will keep me for a long, long time in your remembrance room of perfect orgasms and I consciously allowed others to touch you so I can write poems that touch me. Thank you, Jose, and congratulations on the launch of the Year of the Apparitions. Thank you, Marta, 
and congratulations on the launch of the erotic book. Tonight we are launching an anthology of poems by 89 poets, selected by the judges from the Provers Poetry Prize entries in the summer of 2019. The topic was plastic, interpreted in any way each poet wished. Poems could also be on any other subject chosen by each poet and in any form, style or genre, typically no more than 30 lines long. When we knew that we might have to move the Povers spring reception online, we invited several poets to video themselves reading their poem, or one of their poems, from the anthology. What we will now enjoy is the result of that invitation. The poets will introduce themselves and will read in the following order. First prize winner, Maria Elena Blanco. Second prize winner, Aidan Hoon. Two of the four third prize winners, Anne Casey and Carol Flake Chapman, and one of the six poets whose entry or group of entries was given special mention, George Watt. All other readings will be given in the sequence in which they appear in the anthology. We will take a break now so you can get yourselves a drink and something to nibble. If you like, you may also like to look at the details of the four books being launched tonight, and if you have time, you may like to purchase ebook versions to have in hand as you listen to part two of this Proverse Spring Reception 2020 online. In part two, we will go straight into the readings by the poets with no further introduction.